What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. Tonight, we're going to take a moment and talk about prayer. One of the unanticipated joys that I have as a father is to teach my sons how to pray. And Griffin, he's all grown up. Uh, he's 18 uh, but I still have two little ones, an eight-year-old and a three-year-old, William and Noah, and it's a joy and a delight to teach them to pray. It teaches me patience because they're not always patient for it, but they're starting to learn that this is something very special, something that we set aside time to do, and the posture that we have and the words that we say and the focus that we give to it sets it apart from every other conversation that we have. Now, I, I've prayed many different ways over the course of my life. I used to be uh, a mainline American Protestant, a, a fundamentalist evangelical, and a borderline oneness Pentecostal for many, many years. Now I'm a, a conservative, confessional, orthodox, liturgical Lutheran. Uh, and so the way that I used to pray and the way that I pray now is very different. Uh, and I think judging them on their merits, having gone through them both, I find the mainline American Protestant way of praying lacking. It uh, doesn't mean it doesn't have value. It just means I find it lacking. There's a there's a good way to pray, and there's a better way to pray, I think, is the best construction that I can put on that. And how I'm teaching my children to pray, and what I want to share with you, is how to pray from Luther's small catechism, this little book of instruction into the Christian faith for children. So we're going to go through evening prayer. This is what I do with my boys in the evening to teach them to pray. And as Luther points out in his catechism, it is the responsibility of the head of the household to teach his household to pray morning and evening. So from Luther's small catechism, when I have my children in their rooms, we make the sign of the Holy Cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We fold our hands and we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And then we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And lastly, we say, I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all of my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, so that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. This very basic, simple way of praying is a beautiful instruction into the concept of prayer for children. Luther was a genius when he penned his small catechism explaining the basics of the Christian faith, the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, Baptism, the Lord's Supper, and daily prayers. When we say our prayers at the dinner table, we pray the prayers as Luther instructs the head of the household to instruct his family to pray. This is a, a, a launching point. This is not how it must be done. This is an excellent way to do it. It's a very good way to do it. And so this is how I, as a Lutheran, having been formerly a mainline American Protestant and evangelical who prayed the, the, uh, the piggy prayers, I guess you could call them, the we, we, we prayers, the we just, we just prayers, the I'm struggling to come up with something, but I have to sound pious prayers, this way of doing it. It's not restricting them to words that they have to say. It's giving them very good words to say so that they can learn that prayer is a very different kind of conversation. And while 
there is one side of it that is we are asking of our Heavenly Father as children ask their dear Father on earth with all boldness and confidence. We are also speaking through the Son in the Spirit to the Creator of the universe. And so it teaches them the patience and the reverence, the posture that we have when we pray, the signs that we make when we pray, folding our hands, closing our eyes. All of these things are teaching my children about prayer. And my children, I love them to death, and they've shown me time and again that they understand prayer better at the ages of eight and three than I did as an 18-year-old evangelical. So I thought I'd share that with you. If you're a big fan of the content that you see here on 1517 Films, be sure to like the videos that are your favorites. Be sure to subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section for this video. Let's talk about prayer. How do you pray in the evening? How do you pray in the morning? What resources do you use? Looking forward to meeting you in the comment section. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and always hit that notification bell because I do have a family and I am sporadic with my uploads. It's been a pleasure to talk to you about prayer this evening and until next time. May God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.